In this video, you will learn how to animate in Flash, even if you've never opened the program before. And if you'd like to download the animation file we create, it'll be available at the end of the video. So when you first open up Flash, you'll be greeted with this welcome screen. Let's create a new project by selecting Action Script 3.0. So by default, Flash will create a video that's 550 by 400 pixels, which is an odd size, and I don't know why it does that, but let's change it. So if we go under our properties, which may be located on the right side or on the bottom, or if you don't see it, you can go to Window and select Properties right here. So we're going to go into our properties. FPS stands for frames per second, which is how many drawings occur per second. 24 frames per second is pretty standard for film and animation, so let's leave it at that. For size, we want to make a high definition video. So let's change it to 1920 by 1080, which will give us a nice high definition video. Stage color you can leave as white, but my preference is to change the color to like a neutral tone, like either this purple here or like a gray. So that way, if you're filling in your character with white, you'll be able to tell that it's filled in. Okay, so let's talk about drawing stuff. This is the fun part. So we're gonna select our brush tool, and down here, underneath your tools, you'll see your settings. The paint bucket is what color your brush will be. And the pencil tool is what color your strokes are going to be. We're going to be going over strokes later. So for now, let's select a fill color of black. And down here are a bunch of settings, but the only ones you really need to worry about are the brush size, which you can select here and pressure sensitivity, which if you're using a Wacom tablet, the lighter you press, the thinner your line is, and the harder you press, the thicker your line is. So with Flash, there's two different kinds of art. There's fill art, which is done with the brush, and then there's stroke art, or line art, which is done with the pencil. So if we change the pencil color to, let's say, a green, then that's our line art. So to give an example, if we go up to our shape tools, select a shape and then drag something out, you'll see we have a black for the fill on the inside and a green for the stroke on the outside. And if we double click, we can select a stroke and then change the size over in our properties over here. So you can change the size and change the style. So to demonstrate the differences between a stroke and a fill, if we draw with our paintbrush, like so, and then select our fill in tool, change the fill color to a white. So if we select our pencil tool and draw a curve on our shape like that, then take our fill and do a darker gray, we can fill in where the stroke has intersected with our fill shapes. And then to get rid of the line, we can double click the line like that. And that's an easy way to shade a character by using the pencil tool. So when you're drawing in flash, I suggest you use the brush because the brush has more variety to do line weight and will generally be more intuitive to draw with. This is just my suggestion. You can totally use the line tool if that's the kind of style you want to go for. So if we want to transform, scale, and rotate our shape, we can go up to the transform tool up here or press the hotkey Q and you'll see transform controls form around your shape. So if we go to a corner and hover over just a little bit, you'll see rotate icon. Then if we click and drag, we can rotate our object and you'll see it's rotating around this anchor point. And when you highlight over the anchor point, you'll get a little circle icon on your cursor. We can move that anchor point to one side and when we rotate, it'll rotate from that anchor point. So that's good for moving an arm joint at an elbow, for example. If we select one of these corners, we'll get a scale option. So we can scale, and just like with the rotate tool, it'll scale from that anchor point. And if we want to keep our proportions intact, just hold down the shift button. If we go in between these, we'll see a skew. So if we reset our anchor point back, we can skew our artwork back and forth like this. And if we want to delete our artwork, just use our arrow tool, select everything, or press Control A to select all, and press delete, and it'll delete everything on screen. Now for the fun part, let's animate something. So I'm just gonna create a quick background for our stick figure to animate across. So our scene right now is bigger than we can currently see. So I'm gonna go up to this drop down and say show frame, and you'll see we're at 53% zoomed out now. You can see a border around our stage. And if we zoom out by pressing Control minus one more time, you'll see the size of our stage. And everything that's going on within the stage will show up in your animation and if you have something going on outside of your stage this will not show up in your animation so make sure all your action occurs within this staging area so let's create a quick background for our stick figure to animate on so now we have a background for our character to animate on so now's a good time to talk about our timeline 
So this is where you'll see all your animation taking place. And if you don't see this window, just go up to Window and Timeline. So on the left side, you'll see Layer 1. And on the right side, you'll see, well, a timeline. Or how many frames your animation is going for. So to rename a layer, just double click on it. We're going to call that Background. And then this button right here will create a new layer for us. And you can think of layers as stacks of paper. So the one on top is going to be the one that you see in front. So we're going to have our stick figure animating in front of the background. So we'll call this layer stick. Then we're going to take our brush tool, select the color black, zoom in a bit, and draw our character. And if we go up to the timeline and right click on frame 2 and select insert blank keyframe, you'll see that everything has disappeared. Well, two things have happened. We've inserted a blank keyframe on our stick layer, which means there's no more artwork on this frame for the stick figure layer. So stick figure is gone, but our background disappeared. This happened because our timeline extended to frame two, but our background is only being displayed for one frame. So to remedy this, we need to right click on our background layer and select insert frame, which instead of inserting a keyframe, just extends for how long the background displays for. And since our animation is going to go for a while, we can go further down in the timeline, say frame 90, right click on our background and say insert frame, or we can use the hotkey F5. So we select frame 90 on background and press F5, and you'll see our background is now displaying for 90 frames. But our stick figure still disappears on frame 2 because we inserted that blank keyframe. So to animate, we need to be able to see what the previous drawing was, or else we'd be guessing where the stick figure needs to go. So we need to turn on something called onion skinning. And that's these two buttons right here. So there's two different kinds. There's onion skin and onion skin outline. We're just going to use the first one called onion skin. And you'll see our red playhead now has these handles on it. And this handle is how far back or how close your onion skin will go. So let's set it to one frame and drag it to frame two. You'll see that even though we have a blank layer, our onion skin is showing a transparent version of our stick figure. So if we were to animate his next pose, say him getting ready to run, and then we go back and forth, you can see our animation playing. So to keep animating, we need to keep inserting blank keyframes. And we could right click, say insert blank keyframe, have our onion skin on, extend it back so we see two drawings, do another drawing, like so. But a quick shortcut is F7 to insert a blank keyframe. That way, we can quickly draw, go to the next frame, press F7, extend our onion skin, and just keep animating like that. But the problem that a lot of beginning animators have is that their character will change over time. And the further down they get in the timeline of doing this, their character may end up looking either a lot smaller or a lot bigger than their first frame. So the way to remedy this is just trace your first drawing. And no matter how far you get, you want to always reference that first frame. So on our next frame, F7, instead of drawing over here and guessing how big his head is, I'm going to reference the first frame again. So now, when I'm animating, my stick figure is not going to change size. So let's animate this guy. Let's get him from the start all the way up to the top. <laughs> So now we finished our animation. Let's export it as a video so we can upload it to YouTube. So to export a video from Flash, we're going to want to go to File, Export, Export Movie, then save it where you want to save it, and save it as an SWF movie, which is Flash's native format. So we'll click Save. And then to convert it to a movie file so we can upload it to YouTube, we need a free program called Swivel, which is offered by Newgrounds, and it's really awesome. So Swivel will convert your Flash video into a QuickTime movie, which you can then upload to YouTube, and it's completely free. I'll provide a link to the website in the description below. So once Swivel is opened, we want to input our SWF that we created. So we select that, click Open, and most of these settings you shouldn't have to change, but you can go through and look and make sure that it's exporting at the right width and height. The video codec you can leave at H.264 high. So all these settings you should be able to leave alone. So once your video is loaded, click Convert. 
and our video is done. So now we have a video file that we can upload to YouTube or email out or share as we wish. And that's it. You've created your first animation. Congratulations. If you have any questions or would like to learn any more about flash animation or animation in general, just leave a comment in the comment section below. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel by clicking here to get updates on any new animation tutorials coming out. Did you make a really cool animation? Let us know in the comments. And thank you for watching.